In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to play from a fake book using simple jazz chords. Now, these simple jazz chords are the same four note seventh chords that we study in the five jazz chord types lesson. The major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor seven flat five, and the diminished seven. So you're going to want to be familiar with that lesson before you start working with this one. When we use these four note seventh chords, the result is we get a pleasing, easy listening jazz chord sound in all of our arrangements. Now we play our five basic jazz chord types with their inversions with our right hand, not the left hand, but the right hand. The left hand is going to play just a simple root note to start with. We're going to concentrate on just how to invert the right hand to match our melodies. So as we make all of our chord inversions, they're all going to be made in the right hand. Just like in our five jazz chord types lesson, if we play a C major seven, it's in our right hand, the left hand plays a single root note. And if I play a C dominant 7, it's in the right hand, the left hand's playing a simple root note. Now we're going to invert these chords, as I'll show you in the next graphic display. Let's see how we work with our 4 note seventh chords so that we can invert them to match the melody in our songs. Now we invert our chords by taking the bottom note of the chord and putting it on top. So that's our first inversion. And we do the same thing, take the bottom note, put it up. That's our second inversion. And if we do it one more time, then we've got all of our inversions. So there's four inversions for every chord. Let's go back to the beginning here. So let's see how we're going to support our melody notes with the inversions of whatever chord we're playing. Now the chords can be any one of our five jazz chord types, major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor seven flat five, and diminished seven. No matter what chord quality, it's always going to be the same formula. So we've got a melody note and we have to match it with a four note chord. It works out very well if our melody note is the top note of one of our inversions. If we go to the first inversion, the melody note might be here, the next inversion, it might be here, and so on. That's just great. But what if our melody note isn't exactly the top note of an inversion? Let's go down here and take a look. We're in this inversion here, and if our melody note is either a half step or a whole step above our chord, what we do is take our little finger, which is playing the top note of the chord, and we stretch it up a half step to play the melody and we sacrifice the top note of the chord. And if it's a whole step, we do one more stretch of the little finger and we've got the bottom three notes of the chord and the melody is being played with the little finger. And this is the way it works with all of our inversions. So if we take our next inversion here, it's going to be the same situation. It's great if it's the top note of the inversion, but if it's a half step above, then the little finger has to stretch above in order to reach it, or if it's a whole step above, same thing. So this is the process we use as we're going through our songs. We refer to these four tones in our seventh chord as the tones of the chord. If we've got a note that's above the top note of any one of our inversions, this is a non-chord tone. So we're stretching our little, little finger up to play a non-chord tone that's above the top note of the chord. And that's the way it works with all of our inversions. In order to play the non-chord tone, we have to let go of the top tone of our chord and reach the non-chord tone, no matter where it is. I'll use the first part of the Rogers and Hart standard Manhattan to show how we match up our chord inversions to our melodies. Now, I always think a good place to start is by writing the chords down to the song. Put them on just a little piece of paper like I have here. Here's the chorus to the song. And then put it on your piano and see if you can play through all the, these chords before you start working with the song and trying to match up the right inversions to put under the melody at the right places. This way you divide up your work. You're first making sure you can do the chords, and then you're going to do the process of matching the, the 
chord inversions to the melody. Because if you try to do two things at once, you're kind of shortchanging both things. So just run through the chords and make sure you can do them. We start by playing them in root position, but then run them through the inversions. As you start to go through these chords in lesson number three, you're gonna see they match up to a lot of the chords we used in lesson number one, Lady Be Good, and also some of the chords in lesson number two, My Buddy. Even though My Buddy's in the key of G, we still have some of the same chords. So we're getting more familiar with these chords and we find that we can apply them to a lot of songs, especially songs in F. And F is one of the typical keys that pianists play in. Remember, there's five keys that pianists like to play in, the typical piano keys, C, F, E flat, B flat, and G. These are our common keys. These are where we're comfortable. The other keys, we gotta play in all the keys. The more you play, we play in all 12 keys. But these are the keys that are kind of just fall into the fingers nicely and easily. You don't have to think about it at all. So I'm gonna start right at the beginning playing every inversion for every chord with just a root note on my left hand. F major seven. You can go up and down and come back the same way just to make sure you really start to get a grip on the inversions. The A flat diminished. G minor seven. I'll just go up now, but it would be good to go up and down. A minor seven. D seven. D minor seven. G7. Starting out looking at our first bar, there's our melody and the first note that we have to harmonize is this C. So let's go ahead and mark the C and we have an F major seven to put under it. There's our root position. I'm going to always play just a single root note in the left hand. Later we find out we can do more things with the left hand, more easy things, nothing difficult going on down here. Often the root note is all we really need. So we're just gonna do that because we don't wanna think about the left hand. Our goal is to find out how to match these inversions to the melody. Okay, there's our F major seven. Let's take it up through its inversions. And there we are, we found the right inversion. It was the last one, it's our C melody note. Then the melody goes, up there to that E note. And on the E, we have to put an A flat diminished with that. So here's our A flat diminished, root note on the left hand. Let's walk it up through its inversions. There's the one we need. We can stretch our last note up to reach the melody. We can't go past it, then we would pass the melody. We have to stay under it and let go of the top note, reach it up to the melody note. Okay, continuing on, the last note is hit alone. So we've got the first bar figured out. Let's go to our second bar. So we jump way down here to this D and we've got to put a G minor seven under it. Uh, let me just start with this G minor seven right here. Oh, see, we've got to come down because the melody note's there. So I'm just gonna come down here, put the top note to the bottom and find out that that's the right inversion we need. G minor seven. Then some melody notes alone. Up to this A note that is asking for a C dominant seven under it. So let's go ahead and C dominant seven. Walk it up. And there's what we're looking for. The melody notes above our last note in the last inversion. So we're gonna stretch our little finger up. And here is this very tension-filled place for the hand. And I've talked about this in other lessons on this exact chord. It's really too much tension. So what I've said in other lessons is let go of something, let go of the root. Now the tension's gone. If you've seen the other lessons, then you've heard me say that before. Tension's all released. So we've got our first two bars figured out like that. And let's just play them like that. Okay, next phrase. We've got an F major seven chord and the melody is. Let's go ahead and mark that G note. And we've got an F major seven chord. Let's walk it up. 
Well, we're just going to stop there, because if we went further, we'd be past the melody. We're just going to stay there, stretch up the top note of the chord up here, and that's what we're looking for. And then our next phrase is, now let's go ahead and mark that F note there, and we're going to put an A flat diminished matching up to that F. So here's our A flat diminished, and it fits up right away. So the first inversion, the root inversion, fits nicely with the melody note. And then the last two notes alone, then going up here to our G minor 7, we've got a C note here. Let's go ahead and mark that C and look for the G7 that's going to go under it. G7, let's walk them up. That's where we want to be. We're going to lift up, sacrifice the top note of the chord to hit the melody. Then the melody note hits alone twice after that, then goes up to an E, and for that we're going to look for a C7 to put under it. There's our melody note. Let's look for that C7 inversion. C7 inversion, walking up, and there we are. And the very last note in the phrase is this C. So let's put our melody note here, and we're looking for an F major 7 to put under it. Let's walk it up here. And there's the inversion we need. It's the same one we started out the song with. Now after you've gone through and sorted out which inversion matches up to the melody note at the points we need them, you'll want to practice playing the melody with the inversions and start to get secure with them. Make sure you really got a grip on them so you're going to want to practice very slowly. And without time at first, don't worry about time. Just focus on playing the inversion with the melody and get that under your fingers before we start to try to put tempo to it of any kind. So just play a single note in your left hand. Don't try to do something else. The point here is not to worry about what your left hand's doing. Just a single root note is all you need. Later we'll be coming back and talking about different things to do with the left hand. But just keep it very simple right now. Put your attention on the right hand and start practicing the inversion with the melody at the points we need them. So it'll be like this. No tempo. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this concept, I have a three-lesson series on my website where I get into three different standards in depth and show you how to harmonize them using this method. We go step by step through the whole process with each tune. Then I show you some left-hand techniques that can create rhythm after you've got the right-hand chords figured out how they're going to be played under the melodies. All right, thanks a lot, and until we meet again.